All right, Michelle. Uh -huh. They're in front of my house. They're at my house. Uh, to, to get the story of the neighborhood. So you, oh, can, so okay. you can stop by. All right. Okay. Hurry up. Bye. <laughs> That's the way it, it's, I'm, the, I'm in the neighborhood. You know, I am. I'm Michelle, and that's Jubilant, and then there's Robbie. Robbie runs the Black Santa Monica Tours. She'll tell you about that. All right, Michelle, so I hear you have some stories to tell me. I do. It depends on what you want to hear about. Oh, Michelle, she's amazing. She's one of my favorite clients. I knew that that particular area in Santa Monica always looked different. It always felt different. There's a lot of small cottages next to these gorgeous mansions. And then across the way, you have um, an apartment complex, but then you have all these condos. A lot of development that's going on that isn't necessarily congruent. You know, Santa Monica, when I would go visit my relatives in Texas, or I met other blacks that lived in LA, and I would say, they say, where are you from? I'd say Santa Monica, and they go, oh, you live in that white man's town. And I go, they're all blacks around here. What do you mean, what? So when I would go out with my white friends that were also from Santa Monica, I saw that, why are there no blacks over north of Montana? Why are there no blacks over on the south side of Ocean Park? And this was considered, it was called the Pico area. My dad said, oh man, when, when I bought this property, we were only allowed to buy during, down this strip from Pico all the way to the beach. If you saw a house in another neighborhood, you couldn't purchase it because of your color. Those are the covenants that they've had against quote unquote Negroes buying, renting, or owning property outside of this certain corridor. So a racially restrictive covenant that um, would have been put on a property deed uh, generally would say nobody that was African-American, Jewish, Mexican, Asian could buy the property or live in the property. So it was for Castilians only. A property that went for, I don't know, 50,000 back in the day or less, less. I think my father said he built this house for $14,000 or something. You know, that's really crazy, right? You know, it took, uh, I understand your question, and that is a good question. There's a lot of family history here. And so, therefore, it's kind of bittersweet, me leaving. I had to, I had some guilt, and I had some, I had to work through all that, and decide what Michelle wanted to do. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, there is a legacy here. As the citizens in this community move, so does somewhat of the history in their story. Everybody would meet at the beach. We didn't have to say, well, where are you gonna be? Where you? Because we knew the only place we could be was at the foot of Pico um, at the Inkwell. This was the area that the local people who lived here in Santa Monica wound up coming because there was a, a public beach area and they were less likely to be harassed uh, by white people here than at some other, other beaches in Southern California. Inkwell meaning, you know, you have a bottle of ink and it's generally black, right? And so it's an inkwell. It's where these black people go to sunbathe and, and swim and even surf. Illusion, as I did for many years, even I would argue with my dad, times have changed. They are not the same. My dad would say, you've got to be very shrewd and careful. You know, the white man, he's not always going to be honest with you. And I go, dad, that's old. That's not the same. I never knew the story that this area was only for us to stay. We were not allowed, really. The unspoken rule 
to, to live this, to, to buy outside of this area. The old saying that a lot of people who buy a home in a neighborhood 20 years later could not afford to buy back into that neighborhood. And I find that through my experience and, you know, just meeting homeowners in that neighborhood and others, that that is absolutely true. Common misconception that the people who live in Santa Monica are all rich. That's what people think. Oh, if you live in West LA or Beverly Hills or any of those areas, you must be rich. Well, that's not necessarily true because the majority of a lot of people's money where their real wealth is, is trapped in their home. So, you know, they're selling, you know, these multi-million dollar homes that, that these folks paid $50,000 for back in the day. So um, it's an opportunity for them to to live comfortably, not that they haven't always. The bittersweet is they're leaving. That's the bitterness of that. And, you know, I love being able to say that there are blacks in Santa Monica that helped establish this beach community. That's the, that's the, the beauty of this neighborhood is that we are somehow all connected as these properties are being sold, the story behind this neighborhood, I fear it may be lost because the neighborhoods tell you the story through the inhabitants. Nothing ever, nothing ever ends. It just continues. It may stop here, but spirits are here. They're good spirits. I think the man that bought the house, I think he felt those spirits. I will be going to be near my granddaughter and that's who I want a, a legacy with in another part of California. Hey everyone, Cody Broadway here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the NBCLX YouTube channel. Be sure to click here for more videos and also click here to subscribe to join the NBCLX community.